We are live in Paris, bro. Yes. We are alive in Paris and live in Paris from the Apple Music Radio Studios. And I'm sitting here, yes. and it's official now. The word is out with Apple Music's Super Bowl 58 halftime show headliner. Usher, what's up, man? It's happening. It's happening. It has happened, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo! Do you feel relieved? We made it. Do you feel relieved <laughs> now that everybody knows? Um, I do. Yeah, I bet. I mean, it's been a, a lot like to keep secrets from my own kids. At home, I was gonna I'm like ask I can't. You, how many people? I bet you could fit on one hand have actually known this news. Yeah, a, a very, very close knit um, group of people knew, and uh, we're really excited about the entire thing. Yeah. Obviously, a legacy, but yeah. more than anything, the fact that this is the most grand stage to ever play on, man, it really is. Yeah, people say it's the biggest stage in entertainment for the shortest amount of time. It is right. Those thirteen minutes mean everything. Yeah. It's been on my bucket list for a long time. Yeah. I've been asked many times, like, what are the benchmarks or what are the things that matter the most, I guess, to you? It's obviously mm -hmm. performing, mm -hmm. but being able to perform on that stage because so many amazing performers throughout the years have, have grazed it and yeah. did an amazing job. So, of course, the obsession of that starts, but, man, just the excitement in this moment, like, yeah. to really be able to savor this moment. You, you remember the first time you ever heard your record play on the radio. You yeah. remember the first time you ever heard your voice, you know, uh, on a on a format or a radio, right? Mm -hmm. This is like that one of those. For me. Yeah, it's, it's one of those. It's happened. This is. I'm very very happy, man. I think one of the big questions that everybody everybody wants would want me to ask is, what's it like getting that call from Jay Z? Oh man, I didn't. Well, I mean, you know, me and the big homie, we we talk often, but uh, when I got this call, yeah, and he said it's it's time, it's magic time, you know, it, it's it's time for you to have that moment. Mm. I'm like, what? What you talking about? He's like, the Super Bowl. <laughs> like, oh man, you ready? Absolutely, but no question. Yeah, and it was like, this was destined to happen. I think that everything that led up to that moment, going to Las Vegas for my Vegas residency mm -hmm. for the last two years, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the legacy, obviously, that is the music, the celebration of, of entertainment in that place. It's a city of lights, you know. It's always been a place where, where you know, entertainers go and, and find love and passion to mm. yeah, connection to their fans. Mm. So for the Super Bowl to have made its way to Las Vegas, while we were in Vegas having such an amazing two years. And that's just the tip of the iceberg too, because the milestones that are occurring and I mean, the, the Super Bowl will happen as you said, at Allegiant Stadium in Las Vegas February yeah. 11th, 2024. Now that also coincides with 30 years. Yeah. More than two thirds of your life dedicated to entertainment, to performance, to songwriting. <sighs> To recording yeah yeah I mean, do you ever especially as you've been going through and trying to bring all these different parts of your journey together to perform in vegas and create shows like this does it does it make you reflect on on the life lived thus far i mean of course i mean you think about all the people who have played it and and just the idea of how jay-z mm. and rock nation have really brought a mindfulness to our culture you know, 30 years of a career deserves this kind of moment. But to have curators like them, mm -hmm. like Jay-Z, mm -hmm. like Dez, and like Rock Nation to come in and and manage to make certain that the entire world understands our culture, understands where we come from, understand the, understands the feeling, and, and celebrates entertainment in the way that, that they do. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's just, a, it just feels like it was... You know, I guess if you try to create a playbook in your mind, like 30 years after you start, yeah. you potentially play the Super Bowl. Some people wait an entire lifetime, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't feel like this is my lifetime. I feel like I'm only kind of starting to really, really get comfortable. That's what's crazy is people yeah. keep talking about how this is a real modern day legacy. Yeah. You're not just in a reflective mode. You're also prepping something new all the time. You better say it. You know, a new residency right here in, in, in Paris. In Paris. Shows. Oh, by the way, right. We, we, the world knows that I'm playing the Super Bowl today, but I'm also too opening here at La Cien Musical. You got broad oh, shoulders, man. man. And it's right? my daughter's birthday. I'm like, man, I, I got like the trifecta. I'm, I'm good. It's a beautiful day. You know it's a beautiful I mean? day. But then there's also new music coming in, um, you know, to coincide with the songs you've already put out. And That's we're going right. to save that information toward the end of this conversation. Mm -hmm. But you talked about, um, you know, the, the, the Super Bowl and, and this, this new era that the Super Bowl is in of, of authenticity, um, mm -hmm. of representation, of excitement, of music, of energy. And I think about your first experience um, watching the Super Bowl halftime show and what it was like as a kid and whether that was the beginning of a manifestation for you. Um. Yeah, I think being able to see performances from artists like Michael, you know, um, eventually Prince, mm -hmm. and then even, you know, more modern day artists. And 
and to be perfectly honest, to see artists that, you know, even started before, no, started after I did mm-hmm. get it. I was like, man, at some point I need to get a call. What, yeah. am I, what's going on? Yeah. No, but I'm really happy that I'm joining that, uh, that short list of legacy artists from my genre who uh, deserve this moment. And um, I'm really happy that Jay-Z and also to mm-hmm. Rock Nation, you know, really put thought into making certain that they could bring the, the world this kind of experience. It is definitely going to be a moment to remember. I don't know how you're going to fit it all in. I mean, I think Vegas probably has been helpful in that regard because, you know, again, you, you do get to celebrate every night yeah. your achievements. Oh, yeah, just warming up. Just, just warming up. Just yeah. warming up. Yeah, just warming up for the big one. No, man, um, but welcome to my home. <laughs> yeah, Vegas is actually my new home. You know what it must feel like a second home right now. <laughs> um, but I wanted to ask you, you know, what you have learned from from doing these residencies, in particular, your latest one, My Way, uh, the Las Vegas residency. Mm-hmm. And what is, what's, how you've grown even as a performer after so many years of, of, of performing at the highest level, but from a Vegas point of view. Um, reconnecting more than anything with my my core fans you know there's a whirlwind you know of of life experiences that lead you to the songs and that song or those songs Mm -hmm. uh, are the soundtrack for a lot of people's lives so when I look out in that audience and I see my fans who made a decision to have this be their destination with their loved ones or either their friends Mm -hmm. and and have an amazing time it just re uh, minded me but also to re-energize my passion for what I do. I've always loved the live aspect of it more than anything. I enjoy making, you know, incredible records that touch places that I'll probably never go. But to literally be on the stage and perform every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday mm-hmm. for, um, well, during, during the time that I'm there, for an audience that I know came to see me, it really, really feels connected. It felt like, you know, if Vegas had ever become a place where artists came to just preserve their their past legacy, mm-hmm. I don't look at it as that. I've yeah. always looked at it as an opportunity to open new doors and new opportunities. And look what happened. Mm-hmm. That actually became it. So their idea of manifestation, mm-hmm. I went to Las Vegas to just remind myself and uh, remind my fans that I'm, I'm here for them, that I am connected, that I am still you know, running and gunning, and I'm and I and I got a and I got a lot more where they came from. It's a really unique relationship that you've built over the course of your life and career with your fans, and I think Confessions, which celebrates its 20th anniversary next year, more milestones, uh, is this, a, is a really important album on that level because um, you know it, it it opened new doors, you mm-hmm. know, very honest doors, you know, subject matter unfiltered, and we've seen Confessions. You it, know, got it got raw, <laughs> yeah. and it, it got, got some, real, and, and it was very successful, <laughs> very successful, like 18 million. At, albums and counting I think sold yeah. at this point um, you know, Diamond Platinum Diamond well Stones. let's just say for you know the time of selling tangible copies yeah. obviously we've now gone to a place of streaming yeah um, you know it's the last Diamond album specifically yeah. in my genre mm. for any artist mm. and uh, Diamond I, by the way for people who are watching is 10, 10 million. million albums yeah. sold starting off with 1.1 million units you know of the Week first one. week so really excited about the 20th anniversary of confessions yeah, and it's weaving its way into the announcements too it's been really fun watching the kim kardashian piece just roll out um as part of the you know, that part of the deon sam's pretty nice just gone live there's other ones to come um you know and it, it's it's interesting seeing a young you in in relation to a new announcement in a modern day representation and i know that yeah. still to come without giving too much away you're going to address that yourself in absolutely. one of the last little videos that's coming out today absolutely what would that young person have thought about um how would they how do you think you would have reacted if you've been offered this around confessions when the album was so big you could have been I don't know if, man, you know, I don't know if the world would have been ready for that kind of energy at that time or understood it because of the messaging of the album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that, um, um, and you got to listen to it in order to get it if you don't get it. But, uh, <laughs> no, um, to socially engage the way that this piece does that launches it yeah. is all the part of telling a story that is both current and both uh, legacy. And that, and that's what I love. That's what that's what I that's what I love about music. Mm-hmm. That it has the ability to transcend in that way, uh, to kind of social platform and social engagement. So that's why we chose that as. That's cool. It's been really fun to see. Um, more big news today. We're not done. Yeah. There's an album that's just been announced and is up for pre-ad right now on Apple yeah. Music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's called 
coming home. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. a powerful statement. Yeah. Um, I feel like your album's voice said something. You know, your last project with Zaytoven, just called A, said a lot about where your head was at and your mm-hmm. heart was at. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a love letter for where you're from, to where you're from. That's right. Uh, what does coming home mean to you? It's a love letter, once again, to mm-hmm. the legacy of my of my career. You know, I've been coming home in a lot of different ways. It's the, the choice of music and reconnection to uh, some of the people that I've worked with from my past and I always wanted to work with uh, writers that I've actually... Uh, made hit number one records with, in a sense, I'm coming home because I'm in that comfortable space. Mm-hmm. When you're at home, you're comfortable. When you're at home, you feel connected. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and, and L.A. Reid right? once, and, and inspired, inspired too. Me and L.A. Reid working together once yeah. again. Yeah. The the inspiration that I'm drawn from does come, you know, with a bit of complication, which is in the music that I'm going to speak of. Is it another honest record? It, there's a lot I mean, of honesty. Like, there's know, a, yeah. I mean, come on, man. I don't, of course. I'm of course. not lying to you. Of course, you know but you know what I mean when I say that when I create a hierarchy of honesty because there's confessions and then there's genuine everyday honesty and then there's confessions. Yeah. Is, this, is this one of those albums where you're really digging deeper than you have in the- Well, I'll leave it to the people who have to listen. Mm-hmm. And um, if any indication of what we've done in the past, me in L.A., uh, is a representation of what you should expect, mm. then there you have it. Mm. Uh, but what you do know is that we're coming together and I'm coming home. I'm back home with my team. You know, even when you see the artwork, you'll understand it. When you see the peach, you get it. You understand where I'm from and what we're doing and also to what this means, the subtlety of that. Mm. But more than anything, it's a celebration of music coming home in many other ways as you get more acclimated when i put out more records and also to put more visuals out you begin to really understand Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. but i think that it is something to be celebrated isn't this a moment when you really get to celebrate in in all the right ways because success comes at different points in people's lives it's hard to process and it can be thrashy and challenging and hard to process and hard to handle and who you share it with matters 100 percent. (laughs) and now you're in a situation where you know you're in a a brilliant relationship with you know a a family existing and new and Mm -hmm. and continuing to grow and and all these amazing opportunities presenting themselves what does success feel like to you now versus perhaps when you were younger it is family uh and that's part of the reason that we selected that name Mm -hmm. coming home and uh, to some extent, being able to celebrate new arrivals, as today I'm celebrating my daughter's birthday. Yeah. So in addition to that, I'm very happy to be able to celebrate that with my loved one, Jen, who's you met backstage. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's it's really great when you have great partnership. Uh, one, because of the the fact that, again, as I said, it's who you choose to celebrate with. But having someone who understands and you or you feel like you connect with and is all about your growth and you're all about theirs. And then you make kids together, you have a great time, you make good music, um, and, and you inspires. enjoy it. And, and it you is, stay yeah. inspired, man. Yeah. You stay lifted. The energy that is coming from this space and this orbit is very much so based in family. As I said, it started mm-hmm. with me and L.A.'s relationship from the beginning. It's a man that I started my entire career with. And, you know, rather Usher, 8701, my way, up to Confessions, and then we had a break. We had a break. We did some things together. We we signed Justin Bieber together. So we <laughs> yeah, we had some moments. But my point is, that kind of energy, that type of celebration, no matter where it sits, mm-hmm. is a great journey because of who you choose to celebrate with. Super Bowl 58, February 11th, the Legion Stadium, Las Vegas, the Apple Music Super Bowl Vegas, halftime baby. headliner. Everyone's going to ask the question, so I'm going to be the first one uh. to get it out on the table. Is it too soon to talk about possible guests on stage? People love the idea of it. Last year, Rihanna didn't give any, bring any guests, and the show didn't need it. Sometimes people bring it because they want to embellish and celebrate and collaborate and share a moment. Have you thought about it? Well, one thing I can say is I've you know collaborated with a lot of incredible artists mm-hmm. throughout the years. If anything, I like to socially engage the world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> saying i'd like to hear who you think you know would uh would be a great uh guest to, great guest to uh compliment this <laughs> you're not asking me that you absolutely i'm gonna put you on that. the spot you're gonna put me on i can't put you on i don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> should we leave that one on the table yeah, all right, cool so by the, by the way by the way there'll be many more sundays to talk about this leading up to the grand sunday of all yeah and um so happy that we were able to you know launch it today yeah you know when sunday comes something something always There's happens so many beautiful who could, whether who could, it's a refining of the moment or just who knows you know maybe you restart you maybe you mentioned saying? one in this conversation already i don't know you mentioned a few you never know you never know who's to say mm-hmm. <laughs> uh last question before we say goodbye at this point man and yeah. um and leave you to celebrate and get ready for a show tonight as yeah, well man. which is gonna be out of control yeah, um people are talking about this magic act 
that very few artists get to pull off, which is to be at this point in your career to be celebrating what has been an amazing run already and getting ready to almost start afresh mm -hmm. with a new album and a whole new feel. Mm -hmm. um, what is the secret to you for longevity? What is that? What is that secret? Oh, the the secret to it. I don't. I don't know. I think I've just been happy in my worst moments, and I think that I've been grateful. You know to to be fortunate enough to just stay passionate. You know, I think that's it. I think if you stay motivated and you st stay focused on the work and not the stress, when there are stressful moments, don't completely give all the way into it. Of course, you should be mindful. Of course, you should be, you know, you should learn. But I guess it's staying creative. Something about this journey has been about never arriving. Mm. It's just really been about the journey you know the journey is the destination so for me i guess that has kept my energy up kept me excited about it being willing and understanding to whatever you have to go through people could become hard and calloused as a result of the hard journeys that they have to go through in order to arrive where they are you know if you choose to live in that it becomes your master but if you see something greater in yourself and also to believe in yourself You'll stay happy. You know, you'll stay young forever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, man. February 11th is just around the corner, and moments like this don't happen very often. We I'm certainly... happy I could share with you, well, same. And I was Solid. just about to say, man, you know, yeah, we don't man. often, thank you, we don't often get a chance to share in moments like this when the whole world is is listening and watching and talking about it. Yo, and, by the way, the last time we were together was my yeah. birthday. Yeah, that's right. Oh, for the eight, right? And I was... We came in here crazy lit. No, but um, <laughs> off a plane, it was nuts. That was brilliant. You and Zaytoven, that was a great day. But I am happy, man, that I'm able to share this moment with you. Yeah, thank um, you. Same, man. It's, it's really, a, it's going to be a, a remarkable time to celebrate this legacy. And I really look forward to it. Um, I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs>